course, we discussed our failure to recognise the extent to which our interpretations are shaped by our prior knowledge and experiences. We called this the fundamental cognitive error. We also discussed another failure uh, in which we don't account for the multiple ways in which a situation could be viewed. Now, this is some related to something we learnt later on, which was the false consensus effect, where we tend to think that other people think the same way that we do, that other people have the same uh, beliefs and opinions as we do, but it's just not true. Now, we have the fundamental attribution error, and that's another failure uh, to recognise the power of the situation in making predictions about human behaviour. That's exactly right. It is fundamental and it's not easy, though. Uh, what is easy are personality traits. So uh, saying that somebody's laid back or generous or honest, right, or messy. These, these sorts of things just kind of roll off the tongue and, and we just, it's a knee-jerk sort of response that we use to explain people's behaviour in new situations. Uh, and again, we've just seen several landmark demonstrations of, of the power of the situation that I think do a far better job of explaining and predicting people's behavior. But as I said, it's not easy. It's a fundamental shift in how we think about uh, people and, and, and predicting behavior. And so I think this is related to something called channel factors. What is it? What is it about the situation, about the context, the circumstance, that uh, needs to be in place in order for uh, that behavior, or that action, that communication, what is it that's going to make the thing happen or not? And it's, <laughs> it's not easy to identify. It's the entire pursuit of social psychology, essentially, to figure out what these, what these small components are and how to put them into place in order to elicit these different types of behaviors. Yep, well, let's go through them then. So what were the channel factors that we just, in the experiments that we just discussed? So in the Good Samaritan, it seems to be the amount of time people had available to help. If they had time, they were more likely to help. Uh, in the Milgram experiment, there were a couple of channel factors operating there. One of them was gradual escalation. So uh, just putting the shocks up by 15 volts um, each time was, was, was a, probably a channel factor that led to them going all the way to the end, to the triple X. If you went from, if you asked people to go from 15 up to triple X in one go, they were unlikely, probably unlikely to make it. Another one uh, was, there wasn't a clear way to exit the yep. experiment. Uh, there wasn't a big red button for you to press to say, look, the, the experiment is over. Um, there's a third one in Milgram that I'm forgetting. Yeah, essentially the fact that he was in a lab coat. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. Is a big like a, one as well. an authority one. Yeah, so he's there in a lab coat, and um, uh, that it's a sort of diffusion of responsibility again onto this experimenter. You're not taking uh, responsibility for that learner's shock and, and pain. Uh, the third one we looked at was the bystander effect. The the channel factor there seems to be the number, the, the presence or absence of people in the room. Now we spoke to Richard Nisbet and Lee Ross about. Uh, the role of channel factors in predicting behavior. And here's what they had to say. 